Is it possible to see three shows in one day in New York? In fact, yes, yes it is, with a variety of different shows in a variety of different arrangements. Oh my god, hey, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I am a professional theatre critic here on social media, as well as a content creator, and my stagey fiancé Aaron James and I recently went to New York. If you know all of this already, then you may have already seen the first few parts of the vlog of our most recent trip. Well, here is the next part, because on one of the days we were there, we saw three different shows in one day. And if you are anything like me and you are traveling to New York exclusively to see theater, this may be something that you are interested in learning a little bit more about. Stay tuned and find out in today's video how you can see three different shows in one day. Oh my God, hey. <clears throat> Good morning. It is uh, between 9 a.m. and 9.30, and <laughs> it's an ungodly early time for theatre going, especially in New York, because it's the city that never sleeps, which also makes it the city that wakes up in the morning and regrets its choices. And it's very early. We spent yesterday on a road trip to Goodspeed Opera House in Connecticut, which is uh, theoretically a video you've already seen on my channel, and then we got back and we're just hanging with all of our friends post-road trip until like 3 a.m., which seemed like a good and fun idea at the time, but now it's 9 and we are both tired, if you're wondering. We also, if you're wondering, both recently saw Merrily We Were All Along because we are both wearing all of the merch. But we have made it into Manhattan uh, from Brooklyn where we're staying via the subway and we are on our way to our first show of the day, of a three-show day. It was maybe going to turn into a four-show day because we were hoping to try and squeeze in Titanic at 5 p.m., but we have just this second lost the rush on Today Ticks, so that potentially is not on the cards, but we do still have three very exciting shows, starting with a 9.30 a.m. performance of what else but Sesame Street the Musical. Uh, so that's one helpful thing in terms of scheduling in New York. Mostly everything plays to pretty much the same schedule, but Sesame Street, because it's a family show, is playing some earlier performance times. The Saturday times are different to the Sunday times. Our friends were shook that we weren't going to the 11 a.m., but that's because the 11 a.m. doesn't exist on a Saturday. And if we try to go to the 12.30, which is the second of its two, possibly three shows today, actually, that would interfere with our matinee plans. So the 9.30 it is, which means we'll have a lot of time afterwards, but that's fine. Better to have too much time than not enough. What else would we be doing? <laughs> and the answer is sleeping. The answer is definitely sleeping. But we are on our way to Theatre 555. Ah. We have arrived at Theatre 555. Do we have a time check, Erin James? What time is it currently? 9.18. It's 9.18, ahead of a 9.30 show. Um, so we're going to head inside, go and check out the merch, and go and see Sesame Street. And for our full theatre going experience, you can go and check out our theatre vlog that Erin is about to film for his channel. It's a cleverly situated base for the puppeteers so our little friends can pop up above it. I'm thinking short thoughts because I'm very aware that there are small audience members here. I don't mean you. I'm not talking about you. Even smaller. Why, you are a wonderful Wanna crouch? Sure, that works. Alright, one, two, three, say Sesame! We have t-shirts in kids' sizes, obviously, this cute little tote bag design. I like these, these are clever with just the eyes, with the Elmo and the Cookie Monster with the wonky pupils. Look at this, we have Grovers, we have Bert's and Ernie's, we have Cookie Monster, icon that he is. 
We have some Hermes. We have Gabriella. We have Gabby Gadabby. And we have Oscar the Grouch in a little trash bin. I can't decide which one I like the most. So we just watched Sesame Street the musical. We did. It was good. I enjoyed it. I had a great time. I like whimsical puppets very much. You do a lot. I do. I, do. I got excited just at the first ones. That yeah, the funny yip mouse. Yips, you really oh, enjoyed. Are they called? Is that what they're called? The yip yips. Yeah. I'm not familiar with their work. I thought they were lovely. What did you get? Oh, so with our VIP passes, that. Um, gave us two things, which was the post-show photo opportunity with the Honkers that yep. you may have just seen. Loved them, loved their energy. And then we each got one of these VIP bags that has a lovely image of Oscar the Grouch on the front that comes with the Sesame Street program. They did this for Winnie the Pooh as well, same producers. So there's no playbills as such, but you can buy a very glossy storybook style program with information about the cast members, aka the characters of Sesame Street, with history about each of them, and also some information about the show and the credits of voice talents um, and composer lyricists. Elmo! Had to get main man Elmo, because uh, he's so cute. He had to be done, and he can boogie. Because in this show, Oscar the Grouch has established himself as a theatre critic, I couldn't not. So I feel a kinship to Oscar the Grouch. What if what if I read the pull quotes like I like in the voices of the Sesame Street characters beneath them? Playful and captivating. One star from the New York Theatre Guide. Ha ha ha. Two stars from the New York Theatre Guide. Ha ha ha. Well, it's, it's not. very early in the day. Elmo, rock has a rock. An experience like no. So this was a lot of fun. It was, it was such a great introduction, I think, to musical theatre because it's a lot more relaxed. Similar to how Winnie the Pooh was, which I thought worked really well. Yeah. Especially in London. So it's kind of cool to see that this return and seemed to have gone there really well. Lovely way to start yeah. the day. And that is show one done. Sesame Street done. Kind of the perfect early morning show. Yeah. Yeah. If we, <laughs> What that is saying is if we had to wake up and make it into the city for a 9.30 a.m. performance. We're glad it was Sesame Street. Yeah. That was a it's cute way. Energy. Yeah, a cute way to start the day. And it's gonna sort of gradually and slowly blend into more like traditional theater because next up, we're going to go and see the 2 p.m. performance of Little Shop of Horrors, yeah. which is, it kind of has a, fi a foot in both worlds yeah. because it's- It's got puppetry in it. It's proper musical, but it's got puppetry in it yeah. as well. So just like, fading throughout the day into real musical theatre. Yeah. And later in this video, I'll find out what we were seeing third. But for now, we are going to go and grab some breakfast, some coffee. We're probably gonna go hit up Schmackeries and yeah. Drama Bookshop. So come with us for the next part of our three show day. Let me update you about our three-show day. We are waiting to cross 8th Avenue with pizza places on both of the corners behind me. We have just been to where, Aaron James? Uh, the Drama Bookshop. Drama Bookshop. Your favourite place to work yeah. in the city, and um, uh, which you do more of than I do, because oh, okay. um, you spend more time at a laptop and I'm working right now. Um, and... So yeah, I've just been editing a review, even though it is a Saturday, so should we be working at all? I don't know. Freelance life, hashtag. But we are now heading over to the Westside Theatre for show number two. We can't remember what street this is on, but we know that it's off of 9th Avenue. So we're just going to walk up 9th Avenue and then we won't miss it. I feel like the weather probably looks pretty miserable around us. It hasn't been so bad. It's kind of been trying to rain all day, but we have, for the most part, stayed out of it. We also went to Schmackeries uh, before we went to Drama Bookshop because I think it's impossible to watch Sesame Street, the musical, and not want a cookie. And if we're getting cookies in Midtown Manhattan, it's going to be Schmackeries. Aaron, what did you You had a Halloween-y one. It was a monster... monster crunch or monster munch, I'm not really sure. Which makes you the cookie monster. That's it. How was it? It was okay. It was... It was different because it was oat, it was oaty, so it was a bit more like a hobnob. Mm -hmm. I'd say like a normal cookie, but it was nice. 
I had the Glinda, so in conjunction with the Wicked 20th anniversary coming up later this month. Um, they're also pairing with Drama Bookshop, which is why they have Wicked displays going on. Uh, but they are doing Glinda and Elphaba themed cookies at Schmackeries. And the Glinda cookie is the most delicious Schmackeries cookie I've ever had. It still has that little bit of a salty kick. So when we get to Little Shop, I'm gonna get a drink of some description because I am thirsty, but delicious wholesome breakfast on our three show day. Now I say breakfast, I'm realizing we're now going to a two o'clock show, so we probably ought to have had lunch. But in our experience, New Yorkers seem to eat later because people eat post evening shows. So I guess we might have something a little bit more resembling a lunch in between this and our 8 p.m. So breakfast so far it is. It is currently about 1.20 if you can see my watch there. There's not a great world of point getting to the theatre much earlier than that because many of them do not open much more than half an hour before the show starts and it's at 2 p.m. not at 2.30. Careful not to make that mistake. If you are in the business of trying to fit in as many shows as possible into one day in New York, you could feasibly do four or five because we've had basically a four hour gap in between Sesame Street and Little Shop which is why we went to go and get some work done. Um, but if there was an 11.30 show, which some days there are, just like one-off events, but nothing really regularly scheduled there seems to be on a Saturday, then potentially that could fit in a gap just like this one. But be careful, because Sesame Street started about eight minutes late, and we didn't rush out of the theatre, and we had that post meet and greet bit with um, those characters on stage as well. But uh, we, we did get out by 11, and I thought we'd be out by 10.30, so had I planned an 11 o'clock show, that would not have worked. I would also say that New York uh, can just be a stressful city at the best of times and navigating traffic and getting around and getting food and getting your bearings. Uh, it can be a lot, so it's probably better to allow yourself some time in between shows and not plan for a mad rush until you really know the city well. And here we are arriving at the West Side Theatre where you may notice Little Shop, Little Shop of Horrors is currently playing off-Broadway. They did have a big old uh, canvas marquee hanging up there. I don't know if they've taken it down in anticipation of the weather or if it just fell or, or uh, secret option number three, I don't know. But I'm now going to pass over the vlogging responsibilities to Aaron James who is literally already filming over there. Um, for our theatre trip vlog, which you can check out on his channel, and I will see you after the show. So we saw this on our last trip in March, and we are back to see it again because we loved it so much. So much! And this time, who are the leads, Mickey? Corbin Blue and Constance Wu. Yeah, so Corbin's done a lot of musical theatre before. I mean, you know, for like High School Musical and the like, and he's done a lot of Broadway, but Constance Wu, I do really know yeah, they've been in the show for about a week now, and thus far, unusually, I've heard nothing whatsoever about their performances. So we're in the uh, exciting position of getting to find out completely for ourselves without really hearing anything beforehand. Yeah, which is very exciting. Feed me. I love that they've done it something exterior. This exterior is really cool because it really fits the vibes of Little Shop. A good bit about Broadway going to the theatre is you can get out of a rain. I love this. Like you've got the plants sticking out here, and you have a community board, and all dotted around you have loads of the different type of plants. Last trip, Mickey loved doing photos with each of these, recreating their faces. It's very funny, you have all this cool fan art, all the different pieces of artwork of the show. And on that side, you have there's a big photo op board, and there's more plants, and there's Mickey again being being the plant. And this is a photo opportunity. It's very fun. So once you get upstairs into this sort of atrium space, we have a bar area and to the left of that we have some merchandise. We grabbed some of this last time. This hoodie here, I can't remember this from last time. I'm not convinced if this is 
a new merch item or not, but it has, look at that cool embroidery on the sleeve, as well as the logo stitched into um, one side of the material there. They're also selling the cast recording uh, with the original off-Broadway cast for this run, which included Jonathan Groff, Tammy Blanchard, Christian Ball. We have key rings, we have magnets, and a better view of that mask again, and the pin. And here is the cast list. We have Corbin Blue, there's Constance Blue, Brad Oscar, look at this fun cast, Bryce Pinkham, very fun. Last time we saw this exactly the same time of the week, at two o'clock Saturday matinee, and we had three principal understudies, yeah. I think, Seymour, one of the urchins, and Audrey too. And this time we have just the full principal cast. So there is really no such thing as like what kind of a performance you're more likely to see an understudy at. Just to bust, bust, bleh, just to bust a little Broadway myth for you there. And we have our playbills already. We're nicely against the wall. It's very nice. This theatre only has one floor, but it's all really nicely raked. And I, I just really like this theatre. Not gonna lie. There's another plant and. We have another posing plant. Who's the imposter? And here's another one. <laughs> Come a come a come a lead a shop, lead a shop a horrors, lead a shop, lead a shop a tear. We need one more street urchin, um, and then we're good to go. I think. Mm -hmm. Had a great time at Little Shop of Horrors at the West Side Theatre, sitting in almost exactly the same seats we were sat in <laughs> the last time we saw the show at that theatre back in March. Um, but yeah, good time was had. Continuing with our day. Um, and there are possibly some complications, which I will explain to you momentarily. First of all, I will say that the reason Little Shop is a great choice for a three-show day on Broadway is because it is quite short. It's not a long show to begin with, and this production at the West Side Theatre, this off-Broadway revival, shortens it even more. Why there is a verse missing from the title song at the beginning, I have no idea. But it does mean that the show comes down at around 4pm, even though it starts um, at 2.05 rather than 2, which I think is um, pretty common. Honestly, seems to be on Broadway that things don't actually start officially at the advertised time to allow for latecomers. But finishes around 4 p.m. So if we had booked tickets to Titanic, gives you a comfortable amount of time to make it a little bit downtown because that's not in uh, the immediate vicinity. It's not in the Midtown Theatre District. Uh, so it would give you an hour to go and make that five o'clock curtain. Even if there was a 4.30 nearby, you could probably make that. As it happens, we are seeing a Saturday evening show, which is going to be starting at 8, hopefully. So once again, we have plenty of time. We're going to go run some errands, uh, going to go grab some food, and then theoretically we know what show we're seeing this evening, but it may be in flux. We'll see what happens. And sometimes, as you go about your three-show day on Broadway, you have to run other errands. We have just picked up this um, package from the stage door of Sweeney Todd for a merchandise collaboration that I am doing with them on Instagram. All in a day's work here on Broadway. And helpfully, that was made possible today, again, because Little Shop is short, so I knew I wouldn't be able to get anywhere near the Sweeney stage door after their matinee came out. But because Little Shop came out so much sooner, the audience was still inside. Uh, the tale of Sweeney Todd was still uh, in attendance. And now, unfortunately, I've wandered into the middle of Times Square. This is not ideal. There are headless Mickey Mouse everywhere. Um, but we are heading over to the box office of the show we're meant to be seeing this evening because, I'll just tell you, we're meant to be seeing the 8pm performance of Gutenberg, um, which is opening 
next week. It's currently in press previews, but for the first time today in its preview period, one of its two stars, it's starring Josh Gad and Andrew Rannells, and Josh Gad was out this afternoon, I saw on social media. So we're heading over to the box office because I'm there on a press ticket, which means if Josh Gad is out this evening, we have to reschedule, basically. Um, and I can't liaise with the press team because it's a weekend, so that makes everything a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna go and check in with the box office, see if they know what's happening this evening. Ideally, he might not be out this evening. Uh, possibly they can bump us to tomorrow evening because that's the only other free slot we have without everything getting very complicated. So, a little bit dicey, but hopefully it will all be easily resolved one way or another. Okay, so they still don't know what is happening with Josh Gad. This evening he's had uh, what he's described on social media as like a, a brief but a medical emergency that he's had to immediately address and he's hoping to be back in the show by this evening. Obviously under any other circumstances, I would be cool about seeing the understudy. Um, it's a bit tricky here because this is a specific press booking to review and if this was a weekday and the press people were at work they would be emailing me to cancel it and to move me to a different date uh, because I'm not really allowed to review especially when it's only a two-person show I'm really not allowed to review it without one of the principal people involved unless I absolutely can't do it on a different date now I could do tomorrow um, but no one's at work which makes it slightly more challenging it's still quite early it's not five o'clock yet um, so there's like three and a half hours until the show so we're gonna wait and see how the situation evolves hopefully all is well hopefully he's feeling fine hopefully everyone is well and healthy and um, <laughs> this doesn't cause an issue in our day but it is not lost on me that last time we were here we tried to do a similar three show day and our evening show ended up getting cancelled so it only became a two show day um, and like it, sh it should be very feasible and doable but for some reason we haven't been able to manage a three show day yet on Broadway because things keep going wrong so hopefully we make it to a third show tonight hopefully it's Gutenberg but we'll see what happens by way of an update not to have just uh, increased the tension on this video and then to calm you but as we were walking away from the James L. Jones Theatre Josh Gad just got out of that car behind us so he's in the city he's at the theatre that doesn't necessarily mean anything but hopefully I mean he's walking and talking and looking fine hopefully all is well hopefully everyone is well and hopefully it all goes well this evening but a little bit of added drama into the middle of this video for you all Now the reason I've just showed you that 7th Avenue is not normally closed to traffic and filled with uh, little food kiosks but that is because it's a holiday weekend here in New York. It is what was formerly known as Columbus Day and is now known as Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, the reason I tell you this is because it's yet another reason to factor in walking time between venues into your plans. You hit a crowd like this and you start to move quite slowly as you're noticing now but also it can work to your advantage because little one-off events, holiday weekends uh, can alter show schedules. Things like if you're here around the Tonys uh, earlier this year and Juliet did an extra Friday matinee performance. This weekend in fact a lot of shows are doing an extra Sunday evening because it's a holiday weekend and more people are in New York. Um, and some of them, for that reason, haven't done a midweek matinee this week, uh, so they don't do more performances than is normal. So, worth looking at show schedules for your visit. Uh, don't necessarily assume that everything is as normal, especially if you're going to be here over a holiday weekend. Okay, we haven't heard that Josh Gad is not doing the show tonight, so we're heading back to the James L. Jones Theatre, named for Darth Vader slash Mufasa, uh, to go and hopefully see the 8pm show of Gutenberg. Obviously, we will let you know if that changes, but we've just had dinner. My goodness, Times Square, everybody. The theatre is on the same street where we just had dinner, otherwise we would not have walked this way. Yeah. Uh, but very important in your multiple show day to remember to eat. Because I know you yeah. theatre people, I know us and I know our friends, 
and we deprioritize basic human function like sleeping and yeah. eating and drinking water. Like, I've, I'm just running on Junius Cheesecake and themed cocktails at this point, but do as I say, not as I do. Um, we just had a nice dinner at Emmy Squared Pizza. Yeah, with Kate. Yes, with our friend Kate. Um, which we wanted to go back to because that's the pizza place that's attached to the Civilian Hotel where we stayed earlier this yeah. year. We're not staying in Manhattan, on Manhattan, this time around. That's the first thing we did when we arrived in New York. Yes, and we so weren't hungry enough for how much we got because we, we ordered the same thing, basically. We got, what did we get? Uh, a Miranda pizza. Gluten-free. And Zika fries? Zia fries. Zia fries. But what was interesting was the Miranda actually is not on their menu anymore. No, they it's were offering throwback. it as like a throwback option to Which some of the... Cute, it was like a throwback when we came back. So it was like throwing it back to our first trip. Yeah, it was good timing. I'd have been very annoyed if they just didn't have it. Um, but it's the hot honey on that pizza that yeah. makes me go, ah, chef's yeah. kiss. Um, there but yes. a different one with the hot honey now. But there was another hot honey pepperoni, one. I think. Yeah. Okay, just been to check uh, at the theatre. It's still super early, uh, like 90 minutes yeah. till curtain. Uh, but checked with a nice man from security who said that Josh is in the show tonight. So all is well. Um, and that will be our third show of our three yeah. show day. Success. Um, they had it still on the cast board in, uh, by the box office that it was the cover on for that role. Yeah. But um, according to a nice security man, um, not the case. So hopefully, uh, hopefully all good. So now killing time before the show by just kind of walking around the vicinity of the James L. Jones Theatre. In, in another version of today, we would be uh, probably just finishing, or not even finishing Titanic by now. Uh, that, is, that is a little bit of a run. If you try and do a five o'clock Titanic show and then make an eight o'clock curtain back in Midtown Manhattan, uh, you won't necessarily have time for food. Be aware of that one. But not a problem for us today because we couldn't get tickets. So one short stroll later, we are back at the James Earl Jones Theatre to see Gutenberg. There's already a line forming down there. This will be our third show of a three-show day, and we will have done it. Three shows in Midtown Manhattan, two off-Broadway, finishing with a Broadway show at 8 p.m. So we're going to go inside now and see the show, and then we will do, I guess, a little bit of a chat about the three shows we've seen today. Similarities, differences, favorites yeah. of the day, perhaps. I don't know. I'm going to show you a snippet of what we got up to inside the theatre, but if you want to see our whole theatre trip, you will once again have to head over to Aaron James's YouTube channel, where there will be a full theatre trip vlog. Yes. For now, we're going to go and see Gutenberg. And where are we, Mickey? At the James L. Jones Theatre in Broad Manhattan, on Broadway, in oh, New York, come New see. York, <laughs> to see Gutenberg. Is this a musical? Yes. To see Gutenberg that is a musical. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten. A musical that's been about a while but it had never been to Broadway before so this is its debut on Broadway. We were discussing other examples of shows that kind of their first outing on Broadway was a revival of the show. It wasn't the original production so yeah. like Little Shop of Horrors, Hedwig and the Angry Inch. It's interesting because we don't actually know what this is going to be classified as Yeah, I when, haven't decided yet. When it comes to the Tonys, are they calling this a new musical because this is its first time on Broadway <laughs> or are they calling it a revival? I'm team revival. But I haven't seen the show yet. Maybe yeah. I'll change my mind. And here is the James Earl Jones Theatre. It used to be the Court Theatre, which is actually still at the top bit there. You can just see there it says Court Theatre. And then up on this side, where it says Jones, this is also the theatre. Because when they changed it into a James Earl Jones Theatre, they also renovated it. So that this is all part of the venue as well. I'm kind of tickled by the gaps between James Earl and Jones. Like it looks classy, but it also implies a pause. It's like James Earl Jones. I find that a lot of the newer and um, renamed theatres for people have their signature and I notice that this one doesn't. Doesn't? It's not a signature theatre. Maybe he had a terrible signature. Has. He's still alive. Do you want to know my James Earl yes. Jones Spring Pride? I saw him in Driving Miss Daisy. Oh, uh, 
Oh yeah. So at the Wyndham's. And here is a cast board, Josh Gad, Andrew Reynolds, Mickey Joe here with you at this fancy bar to talk cocktails. So we have the Bud and the Doug. Bud being Josh Gad's character in the show, and Doug being Andrew Reynolds. So the Bud is kettle one peach and orange blossom vodka. That sounds delicious. Ginger beer and lime juice. And the Doug, Aperol, Prosecco, and Club Soda. Things that I like individually, but don't necessarily feel strongly about in a cocktail. If I didn't already have questions about what the show is about, I definitely do now. So this is the merchandise booth. We can see a hoodie design here with lots of different words on the back, like musicals about vampires do not work and go off script. I'm intrigued. Uh, there are steins. Is that a stein? That giant mug there that say, I cannot read. There are orange socks with cats on. There are actual cats that have neckerchiefs that say Satan. You can see the t-shirt there with Andrew and Josh. The eyes are slightly haunting. Uh, we have the caps there. They feature heavily in the show. I know that already. You can also get tote bag. Uh, kittens optional. You can get a fridge magnet down there. There is an enamel pin. I'll try and show you that slightly closer up when I get the chance. And a book by Andrew Rannells called Uncle of the Year. Another cool thing they have at Gutenberg is this setup. This display. Let's have Mickey pose. Okay. Yeah, I see that. Let's go backwards so you can see. So they're both holding their cameras for selfies and then you join in. There is a perspective issue because he does look like a tiny little... Yeah, that's the pose. There's a there's a depth problem because he looks looks like a small little man between two Broadway giants. Oh, I love that actually. They've made this inner proscenium match the exterior so it all beautifully goes themed. And this is such a more detailed set than I was expecting and just very different than I was expecting. It feels like... I'm gathering it's been created to look like a stage pre-setup for a show. Another day. Another Broadway stage door experience. We are in a crowd of people on the sidewalk outside of the James L. Jones Theatre waiting for Andrew Reynolds and Josh Gad to come out after their performance of Gutenberg. Oh my god, hey! Hello! We are back in the UK. Here is Aaron. Hello! Yay! Uh, so uh, we did it. We saw yep. three shows in one day because the last time we, on our first trip to Broadway, we tried to do this. Yeah, but the show got cancelled. The show got cancelled. So we saw Little Shop, we saw Titanic, and then we were going to see White Girl in Danger off-Broadway at second stage. But in a weird way, I mean, it was really sad that we didn't get to see it, but it was it was crashing with rain everywhere. Um, that was the day that you did the, five, the 5K it was on. Yes, yes, the yes. The 5K was at the start of the you day. You also did the 5K. <clears throat> yes, but I walked. Yeah. Um, so we'd woken up incredibly early to get a ferry to Governor's Island, I ran 5k and then walked 5k looking for you fools. And then we saw two shows back to back. We had we, we wouldn't have had a chance to have dinner and see White Girl in Danger. Yeah, because we were trying to queue for dinner. Yeah. And then you were going to look for, check to the box office to see if we were going to get the food in time to then eat it and then get down there. Yeah. And that's when you realised that they weren't taking anybody yeah. in because the show was cancelled yeah the show was cancelled uh, so we didn't see three shows in one day even though yeah. it would have been easy enough to do yeah. and because it was raining and because we wanted to eat and because it had been a long day we did. We could have scrambled and found another 8pm show and yeah. last minute tickets but we didn't also it was a Saturday which makes that a little bit harder yeah. Um, and this time around it nearly all went wrong again yeah. because we didn't know about Gutenberg um, but then everything was fine yeah everything was fine and we saw three shows in one day really comfortably yeah, um, it was. Like, I know I started this video being like, is it possible? And yes, yes. Those of you who see a lot of theatre in New York know it's very possible. Uh, we had a Monday night on our trip where there weren't really full shows, but we like went to C6 and then we saw a 54 Below presentation of a musical yeah. afterwards. And then we went to a drag show after that. So that felt like a three show evening on a Monday. Yeah. But it's very doable to do three show days in New York. Like I said, if we booked Titanic, it would have been a four show day. Yeah. Maybe 
if we go back to New York in the future, we could try and improve on it. Maybe the next goal is to do a four show day. I'd love to try and do another three show day again in London because we did last September when we saw like Diva and Ride and yeah. Greece. But maybe that's something we do again. I'm pretty oh, sure yes, you can no, do. Yeah. yeah, six is about to change their performance schedule, but right now they're still doing an interesting Thursday show. So you could do a mm. Thursday mat, a Thursday like late afternoon, and a Thursday evening. So maybe. Before they do that, maybe we'll do another three-show London day next. I don't know. Comment down below with what kind of multi-show day we should try next as a challenge. Obviously, at the Edinburgh Fringe, we did all kinds of things, but that's a very different environment where you have a lot of different options and yep. very like short shows. Most yep. everything's an hour, and there's thousands of shows, so it makes it pretty easy, uh, but you just need to have a lot of <laughs> theatrical stamina. Of, of the shows we'd seen on this day, Sesame Street... Little Shop and Gutenberg. It's hard to say, like, what's your favourite? Because they're such different shows. Yeah, it was different as well, because one was a return visit, yeah. one was a brand new musical that we didn't know anything about, and then one we kind of knew what to expect going in. But yeah, because it... it's, it's a family show on the kids' side of family, but we both have uh, heavily nurtured inner children. Yeah, I, I think for I like me... To say I nurture my inner child. I think I enjoyed... I think the most memorable was probably Gutenberg because we hadn't seen it before and to see those two on stage yeah. together. Yeah. Well, it was a moment. That was great. Corbin Blue's performance <coughs> in Little Shop yeah. was terrific. And <clears throat> I I had a joyous time at Sesame Street as well. I was. This was just... It was just very early. Day. It was very early. But I think I would have probably enjoyed it more later on, in the, like if it was the 11. The 9 was just too early to enjoy. No, I enjoyed it, but like it was more of a case of am I actually fully awake right now or not? Guess who's more of a morning person between us. Um, but yeah, what I'm curious about is uh, those of you that have seen a lot of theatre in New York or have travelled to New York, have you done a New York three show day? It doesn't have to all be Broadway. Yeah. Um, I'm curious what day of the week was it? How did it work? Are there any others right now that you could do? Obviously, Titanic's 5 p.m. show is an interesting one. I'm forever wishing more Broadway shows would do like alternative matinee days or like interesting show schedules because there's a lot of one acts yeah. right now. Like, Here Lies Love is sadly closing. My Son's a Queer is coming in the new year. I wish they made it easier, like Six doing some different types. I wish they made it easier to do like a double bill night on Broadway. I would much rather like go to like a late night clubby Here Lies Love after seeing like a one act play beforehand or like, I, I now can't think of uh, an example, but... I think, I think it is, but then those shows then lose that primetime slot. I think everyone, no one, wants to be, no one wants to be the first to test out a new <coughs> show strategy and lose the, the traditional audiences who expect like an 8 p.m. or a 7, or 7, depending on the day of the week, and, like, no one wants to, no one wants to risk losing business. Yeah. And bro you, Broadway as a community can be a bit stuck in its ways as an industry. I think it is that thing of, do you, are you willing to give up that, that post-work audience or post-at-the-end-of-the-day audience? I think as long as you days? ticketed it right, um, <laughs> I don't know, well, I'm seeing a lot of people want stuff to be earlier. They don't want late, like, long 8 p.m. shows. So I don't know, but then a lot of people like wouldn't make it from the office to like a five pm, maybe like a Saturday it's, five pm. I think I, don't know. I think food's very different though in New York and with London, because um, in Le in New York at least a lot of like people that live yeah. in New York eat after shows rather than before. Because like I don't know, like a one act five pm on a Saturday <laughs> works for people if they're commuting or traveling. Probably is not good for tourists because. If you're there and planning for the day. I forget not everyone goes to New York just to see as many shows as yeah. possible and fill up their schedule. But again, curious as to what three show days you all have done in New York. So comment down below. Mm. When have you seen, have you ever seen three shows in one day? Have you done more than three? It's doable. I'm, my I'm friends guessing. friends have done five. My friends have done five. I'm guessing uh, many of you probably have. Let us know in the comments down below and uh, let people know if there's any they could do right now other than the ones that we did in this video. Stay tuned for the next and what I expect will be the final part of this New York vlog series. Um, and then 
this is going to sound like a teaser, but it's not because genuinely I have no, like we do not have You've not got plane tickets booked. booked to anywhere in the world. But I was about to say, I guess after this series ends, we're going to have to find somewhere new interesting to go uh, so I can start posting vlogs from somewhere else. But as of right now, I'm not even like, I'm not even keeping secrets from you like I've done in the past. I literally... We have nothing's pla- nothing's officially planned. We have no flights booked anywhere. So if you if you have any suggestions for theatrical destinations, send them our way. <laughs> um, open to recommendations. Always will travel for theatre. Thank you for watching the New York vlogs so far. Thank you for watching this one. Stay tuned for the last one. Make sure you're subscribed, and I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds. I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>